And it does seem people are starting to plug in Bitcoin into games. I just had on uh, Jack Everett at Thunder Games last week, and he was talking about uh, what he's integrating there uh, and how Bitcoin plays a role. Um, can you speak to some of the interesting use cases um, people are using Zebedee for? And like, what are what are some people, what are people using to, um, or how are people integrating Bitcoin into their games today from your perspective? Definitely. Um, I'd like to touch on four points, if you don't mind. So the sure. first one, yeah, the first one I think is important is, um, you know, Viker Games. So Viker uh, is a partner uh, that is building games on, on the Zebedee platform. They are a hyper casual uh, gaming studio. They build, you know, hyper casual mobile games. So uh, imagine Angry Birds style games, right? So uh, uh, they have one called Balls King. They have one called uh, Wheel of Trivia, right? So those types of games where you can play for a long time. Um, you know, what they've seen is immediately, as soon as onboarding Zebedee, Zebedee services and platform into their games, uh, they immediately saw a massive improvement in, in cost per install, so CPIs, uh, as well as user retention, right? What are they doing? In hyper-casual games, usually you have what's known as the ad revenue model. They would put an ad and they would earn some on the user's, you know, uh, ad, ad viewership there. Um, so they haven't changed that model. What they're doing is, a little bit of that ad revenue is now being sent back to users through Bitcoin rewards, right? Um, so now what, what happens is the game is not only fun, it's not only entertainment, it is, it is not only a pastime. It actually, all of that time that you're spending on it can actually have physical rewards that they're not guaranteed by any means, but you have the expectations of maybe getting a reward that is worth something. Now, I could give you 100 million gems inside of a game, and I guarantee you that the user would probably probably not necessarily come back, right? They would say, okay, great, I have some gems, awesome. But if you give them 100 sats and they can actually take that out and they can do something with it anywhere in the real world, they could, they could store it, they could keep it, they could spend it on bit refill, they could go down the street and buy it depending on where they are. Um, that keeps them coming back, right? So Viker has seen a massive improvement on return on ad spend, um, you know, upward, depending on the jurisdiction, upwards of 40 to 80 percent. Um, and, you know, that sync usually in game studios and game developers, a single digit improvement in return on ad spend can make can make it or break it, right? You can be a, a break even game developer, game studio, or you can be a profitable game studio. Uh, a 40 to 80 percent improvement uh, is mind boggling. So um, they we, we onboarded Viker in August of 20, 2021 uh, and in end of August and in third week of September they had their first game live on the App Store. So we're talking about a three week turnaround to implement something that is you know as trivial as, as Bitcoin rewards to gamers. Um, and the response has been so great that they went off and now they have nine titles I believe and they're going to move most of their platform, most of their uh, titles to the Zebedee platform uh, this year. Um, so that's been very strong uh, uh, use case for us. Uh, uh, which is the Bitcoin rewards use case. I think uh, go, touching a little bit more on the programmability of Bitcoin and Lightning, um, we actually have a, a proof of concept game called Zebedee Cart. Uh, it used to be called Bitcoin Rally for those that have been around for a long time. Um, and the idea there is we built something to showcase to developers what is possible with the technology, right? You can't just throw them a bone and say, hey, go and build something new with this. Uh, developers aren't aware what's even possible. So we built we built uh, Zebedee Cart as a use case. Uh, what Zebedee Cart does is it changes the dynamics of the game itself. So if you're familiar with Mario Kart, uh, Mario Kart, you have little coins that you can pick up, right? And, and those are worth points and they make you go faster a little bit and etc. But again, at the end of the game and at the end of the race, you just you walk out and, and that's the end of it, right? There's nothing more to show for it. Um, with uh, uh, Zebedee Kart, the coins are actual Satoshis. So but but whereas in Mario Kart you could throw you know one of those skull looking things and the opponent and they can slow down. In Zebedee Kart you throw your coin. So now you're you're at an impasse because do I keep my sats and then I get to the end of the race and then I cash it out or do I throw the the coin at my opponent to then get you know f a better position in the lap? Um, so you have this in incentive structure that's like oh okay interesting. Uh, we we actually even had participants in the many tournaments we've held who would actually not care about placing. They would just go around the track and pick up all the coins because they know they were going to lose, but at least they were going to get some funds out of it. Um, so that was you know another. Other piece so you can actually introduce Bitcoin and lightning to the fabric of your game like the point the actual coins in the game can be that um, building upon that I think uh, 
Counter Strike, which is an integration we have um, with the, through the Infuse platform, is also very interesting because again we we are able to uh, create this technology that you know for example we have this mode called survival mode so you come in and you have 250 satoshis and you come in great i'm part of the game the server and i start going around and if you shoot me and you you kill me as an opponent um the the second i die a, a, a satoshi 3d asset coin starts spinning around on top of me you have to now come and pick it up right for you to get it but let's say you were far away so you're far away and you shot me from far and so now i don't get the reward for actually beating my opponent i have to go out of my safe position and walk into the middle of everything into the mix just to get the reward so now you know you you have folks using the coins as sort of like you know bait because i shoot someone and i there's a coin now and now i'm going to wait for someone to come in right so you could you again you actually put bitcoin into the fabric of the game um and then last point that i wanted to make was uh, you can actually turn, uh, you know, the, the, there's this notion of the, the barrier between an audience member and the players of a game, right? So we're talking a little bit now on the streaming side. Um, if you if you think of, of audience members, they've always been passive. You're just watching. You're just looking and you're like, okay, great. Then they added chats, right? Okay, now you can chat with people on the, on the side. Then they added tipping. So now I can tip and then maybe my, maybe the streamer will see something and see that, you know, hey, Andre sent something. Um, with with Bitcoin, you can actually, because it's programmable money, you can actually attach events, triggers, hooks into payments, right? So what we did with the Zebedee cart as well is we in a streaming mode, you have a QR code on the screen. And anyone that actually pays that QR code, which I believe is 50 sats or whatever you decide it to be, uh, will pull up a gauge. And that gauge, when it reaches the top, it throws what's known as a god mode. And it, it completely screws up everyone. So they, they become tiny characters. They go really slow. You know, the first place gets moved to third place. And it all skews up the game um, for, you know, 10 seconds, right? So you can imagine that the audience members that were passive and just sitting there and watching are now directly affecting the outcome of the race and of the game through tiny, extremely fast, instantaneous microtransactions, right? And, and you can do that. And you can send a message as well. So it's, it's very interesting when you plug in actual programmable money, uh, the same way that the internet has done with information where everything is data. We finally, with Lightning, we finally have money as data. So you can have money and information side by side in any of these interactions. So it's been very refreshing. We have a lot of games coming out this year. Uh, unfortunately, I'm unable to uh, discuss all of them at, at length at this stage, uh, but just be in the lookout for a lot more uh, you know, game studios that have been building on Zebedee that will be coming out in 2022.